Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for our second debate. And once again, can I remind you, the motion is this House believes that Scotland should continue to lead the way in marine energy technology. Proposing the motion is Lossie Mouth High School, who are Christine Johnson, Katie Jones and Amy Anderson. And opposing, we have Charleston Academy, who are Morvan Carmichael, Jemima Morris and Cameron Cochrane. So I'm now going to invite the first speaker from Lossie Mouth to open the debate for the proposition. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chair, judges and opposition. My name is Christine Johnson and these are my colleagues, Katie and Amy. We are from Lossie Mouth High School. This House believes that Scotland should continue to lead the way in marine energy technology. But first, let me define the motion. The motion means to continue to be in the forefront in manufacturing and advancing marine energies, something we strongly agree with. These are tidal turbines, underwater windmills, tidal barges, similar to hydro dams, and wave power devices that harness up and down the motion of the sea. As the motion states, Scotland is leading the way in marine technology. We as a nation are strong and smart enough to know an amazing opportunity when we see one. This is why today, in our persuasive argument, we will convince you that Scotland should continue to lead the way in marine technology. My colleague, Ms Jones, our main speaker, will go into more detail of her argument and Ms Anderson will summarise our main points. The Scottish Government recognises the potential to take advantage of these extensive marine energy resources available in the Scottish waters. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, around 10% of Europe's total wave power resources flow in the seas surrounding the highlands and islands of Scotland. But first, what is marine technology? Well, marine technology includes two renewable energies, energy sources, tidal and wave energy. These two renewable energy sources have the potential for our country. We as a nation have already realised this. Since Scotland possesses huge um, wave and tidal energy resources and the potential already exists to generate more electricity than we currently need from the waters around the Scottish coast. Not only are they powerful, but wave and tidal energy have very low greenhouse gas emissions, making it not only beneficial for us as a country, but also the rest of the world. The Scottish Government believes that wave and tidal energy will make an important contribution towards meeting the future demand for electricity. The Scottish Government is very proud of the progress that we have already made as a country with marine technologies. But ladies and gentlemen, this is not something only the Government should be proud of but also us as a nation. No, thank you. The government has, state, has stated that it will continue to support the local employment for marine energy technologies. Renewables in general open up huge employment opportunities and for Scotland, marine technology plays a big part. Already the marine, already the marine industry has opened up so many jobs. Yes, please. The, um, does the proposition not realise that the, more often than not the marine plans are looked at and then scrapped because they're not going to be any use? Well, that may be some of the cases, but the Scottish population still has the potential to provide a huge economic benefit from this. I hope that answers your question. Already Scotland has marine technology projects in the Penline Firth and Orkney waters. There are so many benefits inside marine technology and as you can already see, tell, Scotland has grasped this. Scotland is home to some of the most advanced wave and tidal technology developers in the world. There is already a boost in place for Scotland in the marine energy sector. But ladies and gentlemen, not only in the Scottish waters, but marine uh, technology is also making a change on land. Centres, jobs and universities are all opening up thanks to marine technology. Scottish people are now basking in the fact that we have these amazing opportunities right between our teeth. They are realising that we should continue to lead the way in marine energy technology, as we have been doing so well so far. Ladies and gentlemen, we as a House also see and agree with this. 
Marine technology plays a big part in contributing to the Scottish Government's targets to meet 100% demand for electricity by 2020, something that we have already expressed we are all for. Scotland is leading the way and there is no need to stop now. It has been proven safe and stable up to now and we believe as a House that Scotland is smart enough to carry on this, at this high standard we are already delivering to the rest of the world. We are very fortunate that the majority of this beautiful country is surrounded by coastline. Already we have harnessed this as benefit. The coast isn't just for a jolly picture out by the sea. Your homes are being powered with electricity. Isn't this just an amazing thought? Don't stop leading the way, Scotland. What is the point on stopping? Continue leading the way and make our country known as the country that leads the world in marine technology. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lossie Mouth. I'm now going to invite the first opposition speaker to outline their case from trust. Madam Chair, judges, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen, the Archimedes screw, the tidal kite, the point absorber, the vertical axis turbine, the list of marine energy devices that are being tried, tested and more often than not scrapped in Scotland is endless. And so is the obscene amount of money being thrown into developing one system that might just be effective. It is clear to any right-minded individual that Scotland should not continue to lead the way because in marine energy technology, because what Scotland is actually doing is leading itself up the garden path to nowhere. I intend to convince you that the cost of trying to develop a system that works is extortionate, and my colleague Miss Morris will cover the dangers to the environment the dash to lead the way marine energy technology presents. In July 2012, when Climate Change Minister Greg Barker opened Scotland's first zone for development of marine energy, he was optimistic that marine energy could provide 13 gigawatts of capacity by 2020. But just two years down the line, massive costs faced by developers in Scotland's marine energy park to connect their wave and tidal project to the grid is holding back both investment and progression. Charges for the Pentland, Firth and Orkney area have almost doubled from £56 million last year to an estimated £107 million by 2020. This is shocking. Scotland should not be sinking such vast amount of money into schemes that cannot guarantee a secure power source just to be considered leaders. Housing wave power is complex and Robert Thresher from the National Renewables Energy Laboratory confirms that the best device may not have even been invented yet. AWS Ocean Energies have been developing a subsea wave device, Scott Renewables Options, the floating motor, and WaveGen and Open Hydro, the tidal ring. And the most high profile development have been Aqua Marine's Oyster and Ocean Paris Technologies Power Boy. So as you can see, Scotland is leading the way in many different types of marine energy technology. But no one can say for certain which of these is the most effective. Advancements in technology are happening at a fast and furious pace. Aquamarine's Oyster, for instance, has now been updated to a second generation model, as the first is considered outdated. Surely we should be waiting for some credible technology to be created that will allow us to benefit fully. Countries such as China are also developing marine energy technology. The largest project in China is a $30 billion tidal wall that could have installed power base of about a gigawatt. We could, why not wait and see what China and others come up with? We could wait, save billions, implement systems that have been proven to work and can provide Scotland with clean, green and reliable energy. Yes, please. There is no need to wait when Scotland is already leading the way. There's no need to stop. But Scotland is leading the way at a huge cost because the things we are creating do not work and we have to keep trying and trying again. Other countries are doing much better than us, will, will be doing much better than us very soon. We should wait and copy them. We need only look back in history to the great King Robert the Bruce to learn how watching others, instead of forging ahead on our own, can have a positive effect. He failed in battles against the English until he watched the spider building her web. He learned a valuable lesson from the tiny creature and went on to be victorious at Bantburn 700 years ago. We should stop leading the way before we lose our wee bit hill and glen that King Robert and his army fought and died for to the carcasses of marine energy devices. Securing Scotland's future is much more important than being the leader in marine energy technology. We need to be realistic 
and not waste money on projects that cannot guarantee positive effects. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to oppose the motion. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm now going to call on the second speaker to make the case for the proposition from Lossiemouth. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Katie Jones, and this House believes that Scotland should continue to lead the way in marine technology. I will now go over a few points that the opposition made in their introduction. You say that the majority of projects are being scrapped. Well, just recently, the developments you mentioned are being harnessed for us to use. And marine technology is our future, and we are leading the way, and there is no need to stop. As my colleague already expressed, marine technology is a renewable combination of tidal and wave energy. Tidal energy captures the kinetic energy of currents that have been created by the gravitational pull from the sun and the moon. Wave energy harnesses the kinetic energy from waves that have been created by winds blowing over. Scotland is home to the most advanced wave and tidal technology developments in the world. These are the coastlines around Shetland, Orkney and the Outer Hebrides. These places have some of the best natural resources in the world. Marine energy suits Scotland right down to the border, as we can already see. The biggest part of our country is the coastline. We are suited to this kind of development. We have some of the biggest waves in the world. We are used to marine technology. Opposition, no thanks. Can't you see, we need to continue to lead the way. Ladies and gentlemen, as Christine already stated, there are so many benefits that come with marine technology. It is extremely reliable and predictable. It's not as if the tide is suddenly going to stop coming in or out. The Scottish Government estimates Scotland, no thanks, Scotland wave resources at 1.4 gigawatts and tidal at 7.5 gigawatts. And every gigawatt can power up to 2 million houses per year in Scotland. The benefits don't stop here. So far, marine technology has opened up so many job opportunities in Scotland, with many more to come, as marine energy continues to lead the way in Scottish waters. Yes? Fishermen who are losing their um, jobs due to the huge amount of marine technology in the water wouldn't say that that's creating jobs. Well, marine technology isn't taking up the whole of the ocean, so I'm sure they can find somewhere else to fish. but also help create new foreign markets to export Scottish skills to Moro. This is putting Scotland at the forefront of the fast-growing global tidal energy sector, another one of the multiple reasons that Scotland should continue to lead the way in marine technology. This kind of energy has very low greenhouse gas emissions, something that's not only beneficial for Scotland, but also for the rest of the world. It has opened up a global export market and a secure and clean domestic energy supply. Marine energy company Green Theme are developing a, have developed a cable-mounted device called Cablefish that includes a camera and GPS to help with cable installation in fast-flowing conditions, so it makes marine technology a much safer thing to install. Di no, thank you. Design and engineering company Tension Technology International and partners to design a novel mooring system that can be used for wave and tidal arrays. Marine data experts Park Track along with partners, have carried out surveys at two Scottish sites to understand the turbulence in tidal flows, so we are still leading the way as we are gathering more information. The Pentland Firth and Orkney waters have an amazing destructive power. We have already taken advantage of this and recently installed an underwater turbine to capture and harness the waves, so we can use this safely for our Scottish electricity. In the Pentland and in Orkney waters, future de development is already planned. The Scottish First Minister, Alex Salmond, has said that the potential of the Pentland Firth in Orkney waters is quite staggering. He also stated that marine technology is reliable and can help us pump out electricity for homes and businesses. The many opinions Alex Salmond has, he is definitely right with this statement. The ocean holds enormous quantities of potential energy that can be developed with very low greenhouse gas emissions. Scotland's seas have enormous waves and amazing tidal power. We need to harness this, as we already have. The sea can be used to generate electricity in three different ways. Tidal turbines, tidal barrages, and wave power devices. 
Tidal turbines work like underwater windmills. These turbines are much more advanced than on land wind turbines that we use across our Scottish landscape, but we are still a fan of these underwater ones. Barrages work like hydroelectric dams, only built in the water, and wave-powered devices harness the ups and downs movements of the sea. Scotland's marine energy sector is to benefit from almost £5 million. This was announced by the Energy Minister, Fergus Irwing. Ewing. Speaking of money, there is also going to be a £4.8 million boost to the marine energy sector. This shows that not only the Scottish Government is all for marine energy, but also the Scottish population. As the Scottish Government aimed to meet 100% demand for electricity from renewals, marine technology plays a big part in this. As Christine expressed in her introduction, around 10% of Europe's total wave resources flows in the seas surrounding the highlands and islands of Scotland. Also, reports the Scottish Government calculate some 14 gigawatts of recoverable energy lying on the western and northern boundaries. This potential has drawn world wave energy developers to this part of Scotland. This helps contribute once more to the government's target set for 100% Scotland's electricity from renewables. Scotland has the largest and most advanced industry of marine energy. We are leading the way with companies like EMEC, based in Edinburgh, where we are today, with stations in various places, including Orkney. There is a huge potential, and the Scottish Government recognise it and want to take full advantage of the marine energies. The UK is one of the world's best marine resources. The previously, mentioned, um, where was I? the previously mentioned Pentland Firth and Orkney waters have a place in more than half of the top ten tidal development sites in the world. Isn't this just crazy that a little island like us could be world leading in something so big and new and amazing? We could change the face of Scotland, our home forever, if we act now and not stop leading the way in marine technology. Seriously, why stop? There is no need to stop. Only bad things can come out of stopping to lead the way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucy Mouth. And I'm now going to call on the second speaker to make the case for the opposition from Charleston. Madam Chair, judges, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen, Scotland should absolutely not continue to lead the way in marine energy technology because only fools dive in without testing the water. My colleague, Ms Carmichael, I'm sure convinced you that the money we are squandering in marine, ener in marine energy is shocking, and I will now reveal to you the real and present dangers to, to marine life and traditional industries that are posed by the rapid development of marine energy technology. Marine energy researchers have a pretty good handle on the movement of water in tidal areas, but numerous factors remain unknown. Environmentalists fear that Scotland is propelling marine energy along far too quickly, without fully understanding the impact it can have to the oceans and life within them. There are very real fears that the natural sea world will be devastated by both the submerged and above water turbines that are concentrated in tidal areas. While energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can be captured and transferred to other uses, like fulfilling our electrical needs. The proposition claimed that Scotland is right to lead the way in this source of energy. But what the proposition need, need to recognise is that the kinetic energy Scotland is trying to capture in the seas around our coastline is already being used. It is doing what it was meant to do, which is serving the aquatic environment, perhaps in ways that we don't fully understand yet. We have surged into leading the way in tidal turbine energy production because the technology looks like a good idea. Underwater turbines produce no CO2 emissions and energy production is passive, simply capturing some of the kinetic energy found in the tidal movement and transforming it into electricity. It appears to be flawless. But, as William Shakespeare stated, wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. There is very little data concerning the impact underwater turbines can have on marine ecosystems. A rapidly spinning blade could easily turn a little fishy into mush with a single swipe. Lorraine, yes, please. Are you aware that the Scottish Wildlife Trust are um, getting a netting to protect animals and they're going to put it around the turbines? 
And the, um, the turbines are being placed in the animals' homes. They'll have to move, and um, the, the open sea is not a safe place for a lot of these animals who are used to being closer to shore. Although fish lovers will be happy to learn that, at present, what underwater turbines spin slowly, one set turns at 10 to 20 rotations per minute, the next generations of turbines that Ms Carmichael spoke of are set to rotate at a, at a faster rate so as to be more efficient and indeed more lethal to marine life. No thank you. The Scottish Government is quite rightly concerned about our marine flora and fauna and many research projects have been set up to look into the damaging effects of marine energy. These include the population dynamics of Forth and Tay breeding seabirds, the statistical modelling of burden cetacean distributions in offshore renewables development areas, and the analysis of fish and fisheries data to assess the potential impact of marine energy. This all sounds great, doesn't it? Well, it's not. Due to the fact that Scotland is ploughing ahead and leading the way with its plans for marine energy without waiting for the results of these reports, innumerable environmental damage could be happening right now. Scotland should be leading the way in research to ensure the safety of our environment rather than pursuing ever-changing and, as Morvan highlighted, very expensive development in marine energy. The lack of understanding of the turbine's env environmental impact goes both ways too. Questions remain as to what kind of effect the aquatic environment will have on the technology. For example, will barnacles accumulate on the turbines of rotors, slowing or even stopping them? Without this essential knowledge, Scotland should not be leading the way in marine energy technology. The opposition fantasise about this so-called effective and fantastic new technology, but the facts are irrefutable. We cannot disregard the appalling effects that marine technology could have on our stunning environment. How awful it would be if Scotland turned out to be the cause of the destruction of incredible marine life, such as the Lophelia corals, the mud lobster, the tiny scaleless blenny fish, and vibrant seaweeds like sea lettuce and dulse. Utilitarianism is all well and good, but what a disaster for Scotland if we put the little but crucially important things to be at the back of our minds, just for the sake of being first. Surely it's the taking part that's important. Scotland should not be proud that they are leading the way in such a mindless vision for future energy. A very wise old saying is, Rome wasn't built in a day. We have no need to rush into something that could be detrimental. Much better to take our time and guarantee security of energy and marine life. We all know what happened to the headstrong hare who dashed about like a lunatic only to be overtaken by the slow, steady, sensible and wise tortoise. Rather than lead the way in marine energy technology, Scotland should take a step back and consider all the implications of their big plans. And I beg you to oppose the motion. Thank you very much, Charleston. We're now going to move on to the summations. So again, no points of information. And I'm going to call on the third proposition speaker to sum up their case from Lucy Mike. Ladies, gentlemen, Madam Chairman and fellow debaters, my name is Amy Anderson. Most people right now would tell you how this is so big-headed, but ladies and gentlemen, let's be real. If you were running a race and you suddenly had a quarter of the race left to go, would you suddenly think, I'm nearly finished, but first I'll go make a cup of tea, a Nutella and peanut butter sandwich, have a bath, annoy my brothers for a while and continue this later? Well, if I have, I would be so happy with myself thinking outside the race, but first I probably find out how to stop my game face, which is not a pretty sight. So this brings me to my point. Why should Scotland go make a Nutella and peanut butter sandwich when we can finish the race? And just to clarify, the Nutella and peanut butter sandwich is representing nothing. And there may or may not be more references to this. Now for some points of rebuttal. Dolphins are alarmed by the sound of underwater turbines, so it's unlikely that dolphins and other marine animals will die. The technology is a good idea, you believe not. Though you may say it's all great, we are opening up jobs, not only for Scotland, but also for the rest of the world. 
It's predictable, reliable and suited for our country. So can we go back to the basics? This motion means to continue to be the forefront of marine energy and uh, marine energy is energy from the sea. The oceans hold enormous quantities of potential energy that can be developed with very low greenhouse gas emissions. The sea can be used to generate electricity in three different ways, tidal turbines, tidal barrages and wave power devices. Tidal turbines work like underwater windmills, barrages like hydroelectric dams only built in the water and wave power devices harness the up and down movement of the sea. Scotland has the largest and most advanced industry of marine energy. We are leading the way with companies like EMEC, based in Edinburgh, and with stations in various places, including Orkney. There is huge potential, and the Scottish Government recognise it and want to take full advantage of marine energies. Around 10% of Europe's total wave resource flows in seas surrounding the highlands and islands of Scotland. Scotland, as a nation, is strong and smart enough to know an amazing opportunity when we see one. And this, my friends, is one in a million. The government states that it will continue to support local employment for marine energy technologies. Renewables in general open up a huge employment opportunities and for Scotland, marine technologies play a great part. Already, the marine industry has opened up so many jobs for the Scottish population and still has the potential to provide huge economic benefit. Scotland is home to the most advanced wave and tidal technology developers in the world. These are the coastlines around Shetland, Orkney and the Outer Hebrides. These places have some of the best natural resources in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues have stated there are many benefits that come with marine technology, like its reliability, the reliability and predictability. The tide will only stop when there's no moon. The Scottish Government estimates that Scotland wave resources at 1.4 gigawatts and tidal at 7.5 gigawatts and every gigawatt can power up to 2 million houses per year in Scotland. The Scottish Government believe that wave and tidal energy will make an important contribution towards meeting our future demand for electricity. The Scottish Government is proud of the progress we have already made as a country with marine technologies. The Scottish Wildlife Trust are setting up netting to protect marine animals so they will not be harmed. And we don't have much money and marine power can help us by giving us an industry so we can boost our economy and help those less fortunate. Scotland needs to continue to be in the forefront of marine technology, not for show, not to be first and not for something to throw back, but to become a peaceful utopian nation with no worries of how to cook dinner, how to occupy my brothers so they don't use me as a football or that I can play on my electric piano. We need to become a harmonic nation and this is the start of a brilliant adventure that we need to continue to lead. Thank you. Thank you very much for that summation, Lossie Mouth. And finally, I'm going to call on the third opposition speaker to sum up and close this debate from Charleston. Madam Chair, judges, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen, as my colleagues, Ms Carmichael and Ms Morris have, I'm sure convinced you, Scotland should not continue to lead the way in marine energy technology. Before I go on to refute some of the proposition's misguided arguments, I want to give you a vision of what the Scottish coastline will become if Scotland continues with its marine energy plans at such a breakneck speed. We have forged forward without regard for anything other than the past and the profit in the past, and leading the way in marine energy will mostly, most likely have the same effect as Scotland's quest for innovation did 200 years ago. In the poem, Lines in Revisiting a Scottish River, poet Thomas Campbell writes about the loss of the natural beauty of the Clyde Riverbank due to a surge in industry in the 19th century. His poem includes the words, and they call this improvement to have changed my native Clyde, its once romantic shore, where nature's face is banished and estranged, and heaven reflected in thy wave no more. Imagine if this is a picture of the coastline in years to come. Leading the way towards a green future is all well and good, 
but not if we also lead to a future that has no concern for natural habitat or the process of its population. Now I must refute some of the proposition's misguided ideas. Miss Johnson, Johnston, you said that there are new plans in the Pentland Firth, but this is, there are already a, an acute shortage of jobs, and this hasn't helped. The proposition has also said that we can find somewhere else to fish. Yes, we could, but the quality and the quantity of these fish and crustaceans will fall dramatically. As you can see, leading the way in marine energy technology is obviously not the right path for Scotland. As my colleague Miss Carmichael told you, the ever-changing ideas that developers have about marine technology indicate that it's very so much in its infancy. The differing advice from experts about which systems for wave and tidal capture are the most efficient suggests there's a long way to go before any one system can produce the 64 gigawatt worldwide target that the developers of the Oyster are hoping for. As Ms Carmichael said, the present Oyster 800 is to be replaced with a Generation 2 device. The cables needed to install the devices into the national grid will cost Scotland millions. So it seems that Scotland is leading the way in a trial and error project that will constantly need upgating and get nowhere near the pie in the sky targets that have been set. Surely it would be much more sensible to wait until the system that everyone agrees is the best and most efficient in capturing wave and tidal energy. Miss Morris spoke about the dangers to Scotland's marine life and certainly the Oyster 800 proves her points. The machine causes great disruption to the seabed, produces noise pollution and disturbs marine and onshore wildlife. Underwater support and electromagnetic fields alter natural environments and migratory patterns. Until we are sure that marine life will not suffer, we should not be rushing into things. Ms Carmichael also informed us of other countries who are carrying out massive tests and developments in marine energy technology. We have already heard about China's massive investments. As well as this, South Africa, Canada and Costa Rica, amongst many others, are developing marine technology. Scotland should be welcoming new ideas and expertise, not grasping onto the labels such as the Saudi Arabia of tidal powers and leaders in marine energy. We need to have secure source, not feel the need to win a race. Scots are known as being canny and somewhat tight with their cash. So why are we not living up to our reputation when it comes to renewables? We should, be looking at the, we should look at renewables the same way we seem to be viewing the World Cup. We are biding our time, waiting for the right moment. We are watching out for the successes and failures of others and learning from their mistakes. Once you've learned enough, we can forge onto the world stage, score the winning goal and hold the trophy high. There is nothing wrong with taking a step back and assessing the situation. If we are not leading the way, we can learn from other mistakes and ensure that Scotland has a bright, green, secure source of energy from its amazing marine resources. Ladies and gentlemen, judges, we have made our argument firm and convincing, and I ask you to join us in opposing the motion. Thank you to all our speakers, and our second debate has now closed. And I think uh, you'll all agree that Lost Mouth and Charleston had a, a very um, a convincing debate there. So if we can just show our appreciation. And uh, thank you, Lost Mouth and Charleston. And we now have a, a, a five to ten minute window where I'm going to invite Portree High School and Hermitage to uh, assume your positions ready for the third debate and we'll have just a, a short handover time.